Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here. And after spending seven years in Cleveland, it's a pleasure to be anywhere, quite frankly. <laughs> but uh, I first want to congratulate all the inductees. Uh, this has been a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, you know, Martin, just because you graduated from Williams, I knew you had a little style. I mean, now you look at Foge Fazio, it's incredible. He went to Pitt. And back then, they didn't have any admission policy when he went to Pitt. So they gave, him, they gave him the rock test, and they gave him three chances to decide which hand the rock was in. So, you know, I think Foch made out pretty good. I think he did. I can't believe that I had to travel 2,000 miles to see this guy, Beheim. I saw an awful lot of Jim Beheim over the course of, year, of the years, and he's done a wonderful, wonderful job. And you know, it's so nice to see Josh and Angela and everybody that has been up here. I just can't see any better kind of group or more, more caring and sharing. And when it was said that Jimmy was talking about the idea of caring and sharing, I just got to tell you a little story. Back years ago, I listened to the radio all night. I don't sleep very much during the course of the evening. And one night about 2 a.m., there were a group of, of, of CEOs trying to find out what they have to do to make their employees happy. And you know what? It wasn't money. It wasn't insurance policies. It wasn't days off. They finally found that it was caring and sharing. And that's exactly what he said. You can't make it without that. You can't make it without a lot of love. And you know, last night when I went to bed, I went to bed very early and listened to radio again, but I had a dream. I had a dream that I went to heaven and met St. Peter at the pearly gate. And when, he, when I got there, he welcomed me in. As I walked through the gates, there I saw Herb Bedell with the most ugliest person I ever saw. And I said, Neil, I'm sorry. That's all right, Leo, you didn't. It took us a long time to get Doug West, by the way. And I saw Neil with the, one of the most ugliest women I've ever seen. So I said, St. Peter's, he had a wonderful life on earth. He's a good guy. He's a journalist and a wonderful person again. So he said, Coach, Neil got in by only that much. That's why he's walking with that ugly person. So I walked a little further, and there I saw Jim Beheim. And then once again, he was holding hands with one of the most ugliest women I've ever seen. And I said to St. Peter, how did he get in to heaven? And holding hands with this very, very unattractive person. He says, well, Rolly, Jimmy got in by just this much. I said, okay. Continued to walk on. And there I saw Doug West holding hands with J-Lo. <laughs> and I said, how the hell did he get in walking hands with J-Lo? Well, St. Peter's turn, St. Peter turned and looked at me and says, Rolly, J-Lo got in by this much. Well, you know, I'm going to probably spend a few more than three minutes. That's incredible. I mean, <laughs> Harry Sickler went to Notre Dame, by the way. That's the Villanova the Midwest, Harry. I, and I was wondering why you were saying so many nice things about Villanova last night. But, you know, this, once again, is a very, very special evening. And it was a wonderful day had the opportunity to play with two young guys in golf. It was, a, it was a, a younger version of the Italian Open. We played with this guy, Irwin, who missed the hole in one by four strokes. <laughs> and a guy named Sean Stanky, who said he was a 14 handicap and probably was a five. But you know what? After nine holes, they were holding our Diet Cokes. 
But old Foz, Foz, he did a good job, Foz, but we lost at the end. But they were two wonderful, wonderful guys, and we really enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I came here to talk a little bit about Doug. And when I, I spent the whole month, as a lot of these people up here has talked about the person that they're inducting, asking his teammates, other coaches, give me something about Doug. And again, I can't, they said, coach, we can't tell you any stories about Doug and Mick's company. So I said, okay, I know a few myself. But I can remember Doug and, of course, he didn't know, but I knew he was coming in the wee hours of the night sometime. But he was always up for our 6 a.m. workouts, and he would beat everybody in the sprints. And no one would ever, ever say a word because Doug was always first. And, you know, during Doug's career, he was responsible for over 6,000 points. 2,000 he scored and 4,000 he gave up. You know, when Doug was a freshman, he was a quiet smile, right, Mom? That's, that's the way he got away with everything, because he had that big smile. And we had our first day of practice, and he was a freshman. Oh, Doug, he's always running, jumping, and on everything. I said, just relax, Doug. So he said to me, Coach, I'm very, very, very nervous. I said, Doug, just go to the end of the line and watch everybody, and everything will work out just fine. And when he came back and said, Coach, there's already somebody there, I knew we were in deep, <laughs> deep trouble. You know, I can remember coming to Altoona, Pennsylvania, and seeing Melissa here and Mrs. West, and talking with Doug about coming. And as soon as I left their home, I said, we have to have Doug West in our program. He will be a great addition, a wonderful young man. And when it came down to the end, it was between Pitt, Foz. We don't give those kind of tests. See, we, give, we gave Doug a, a Carmel test. We put two Carmels in front of him, one with the wrapper and one without the wrapper. If he ate the Carmel with the wrapper, he got an academic scholarship. If he ate the Carmel without the wrapper, he got an athletic scholarship. I'll let you decide what kind of scholarship my boy got. But you know, it took a phone call by the czar, the telestrator, Michael Fratello, that morning when he was going to decide to go to Pitt to change his mind and come to Villanova. And I knew it was taking place. And I called him at 7.30 and decided, and it was a celebration the entire day. You know, Doug ranks fourth on the all-time list of scoring at Villanova University. He never took a shot he didn't like. He never shot the ball unless he had it. That's for sure. He could have made me a much better coach, but he missed seven shots at the buzzer, seven, kill me. And to find out that he shot 49% from the floor during the, his career was marvelous. He made seven threes in the game. Some people don't even take seven threes for five or six games. He started 121 games out of 139 and played in 138 out of 139. That is something very special. He, has, he had a tremendous career. He knows he was my boy, and I had a lot of them. But Dougie was someone that was very, very, very special. And I certainly enjoyed everything he did. When it came time to go to a hospital, when it came time to speak to youngsters, when it came time to fly in from Minnesota to speak at our camp, when it came time to anything that we needed to help someone, Douglas was there. He even came to one of our games out in Chicago when he was playing with the Timberwolves. And I didn't even know he was there until the end. Because that's the kind of person that Dougie is 
and always will be. I've always tried to teach my players three things. You better never forget where you are. You better never forget where you're going. And you better never forget where you're from. And I think this is exactly the kind of evening that Doug represents. I know he's very happy to come here or come back to his hometown to visit his friends and to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful evening. Because that's exactly what Doug is all about. He's about Villanova. He's about his friends. He's about his family. And you know, I can't finish without saying thank you to Miss, Mrs. West for giving us the opportunity to coach her son, but also well. You see, there was all kinds of women all over the place when he was in school. And they were all afraid of Coach Mass because I'd run him right out of the gym. But you know, Wella, you survived because she is a superstar. And I know she's been very important to Doug's success. God bless you, Doug. You know I love you. Thank you so much, folks, for inviting me. And by the way, Sam Bagger, you better be ready next year or two years from now. Thank you very much. God bless everybody.